Uh, I got a problem here. I, I thought in a moment of desperation that maybe you could help me. Desperation is my greatest thing. What's your problem? Well, Sally's birthday is tomorrow. And you don't know what to get her. I'm real good at that. No, I know what to get her. I got it all picked out. A garnet necklace. She loves it. We'll get it. But I can't. I want to surprise her, dear. And the minute I get it, I walk through the door, she'll look inside my mind and see it sitting there. He doesn't know how to keep her from seeing it in his mind, so he's coming to Jerry. He is desperate. Jerry has a solution, though. Don't concentrate about not thinking about the necklace. Concentrate about a whole bunch of other stuff. Statistics, sports, anything. Just keep your mind all cluttered up. Right. All kinds of trivia. Right, right. That's really good. She'll look inside my mind and she'll see nothing but clutter. How do you know that's not what she sees now? He really wants to find a way to surprise her, so may as well give it a try. Hi, honey. Hi. Did you know the largest cake ever baked was 25,000 pounds August 1962 for the Seattle World's Fair? Yeah? And the last public execution on a guillotine that took place uh, in Versailles, France, in June 17, 1918, at, at 4.50 a.m. No kidding. Yes, really. And uh, uh, did you know that lacrosse is a sport of American Indian origin that was derived from the inner tribe? Oh, John, that garnet necklace really is too much money. Okay, Jerry, what else you got? He's disappointed that he can't surprise her, but he says he'll get over it. How soon? Oh. <laughs> About a minute and a half. Can you read what's on my mind? Uh-huh. And? Can you read what's on my mind? You're worried if the dinner's gonna get ruined. What else? You don't care. See, John, nothing to it. I told him that last time, but he decided to throw a baby fit instead. Nice to see he learned something. When your beautiful, loving wife wants to make like married people, just go with it. And unlike times before when her ESP is dinked with his plans, this time he's determined to find a way. Hi, Jerry. Oh, very Hi. Hi, John. Man. Sorry, Sally's not here. She's at the antique fair. I know. I want to catch you alone anyway. You son of a gun. I didn't mean it that way, John. Oh. John, for all practical purposes, we're alone. I'm not sure who Anne is or how she fits into things. Jerry runs that music store, and it looks like she works for him, but John is friendly enough with her that I was hoping she was his sister. Anyway, he wants her to pick out a gift for Sally, buy it, and don't tell him what it is. She's glad to help out, since we can infer that she knows about Sally's gift, too. John leaves, and she and Jerry start brainstorming. Or in Jerry's case, just storming. I have an idea. Why don't we surprise them both by throwing a party for Sally? Hey, terrific. <laughs> Very good. Good idea. I could take care of all the details, and you'd be responsible for getting them there. Where? The party. Yeah, but where's the party going to be? Oh, say, uh, the basement. That's a nice place. The basement is good. Good? <laughs> but remember now, not one word to John, because then if John knows, Sally will know. Gotcha. The basement is the nightclub where Jerry's band plays. And we discovered that John does have one way of surprising Sally. Catch her when she's asleep. He just surprised her with breakfast in bed. I have plans. What? I'm going to come home from work early. I'm going to drive out to Malibu, stop at the inn. Yeah. Going to have an intimate candlelight dinner. Oh. Long walk on the beach in the moonlight. Mm. And after that... Who knows? Anything could happen. He does have to go to work, but I don't know why they want him to. His mind won't be on it. It'll be on that anything he mentioned. Okay. John will see you now, Jerry. I can see John anytime. When can I see you? You're seeing me. Yeah, but you're fighting me. You figured it out. Why don't you give up? Can't you see we were made for each other? Gosh. They sure don't make things like they used to. What girls go through to hide their true emotions. Don't be afraid, Angela. Why don't you admit how you feel about me? All right. Slightly nauseous. <laughs> he did ask. He's here to deliver the present. He also wants John and Sally to go have a drink with him tonight. 
Oh, thanks, Chair, but we have other plans. Well, I don't want to upset your plans, but I insist that you have a drink with me tonight. <laughs> yeah, really, really can't. If you don't have a drink with me tonight, I'll never speak to you again. Jerry, it's just a drink. Not to me. <laughs> oh, I, I, I really appreciate it. I'm sorry. But maybe some other time. No, tonight you got to. Come on. Jerry, read my lips. We can't. Okay, you're just gonna ruin the party for everybody then. <laughs> Party. He wasn't supposed to do that. Now the instant John gets within a few feet of Sally, she's going to know. That means he can't go home. This calls for some serious plan adjustment. Yeah, everything was all set, honey. I went into Mr. Metcalf's office. I was going to ask him if I could get off early. And, and he said, no, he dropped the bombshell. He said there was a big case tomorrow. And that I, I, not only could I not get off early, research, research. but I have a lot of research to do tonight. Right. Oh, so am I, honey. Yeah, I love you, too. Uh, thanks for understanding. Bye. He feels terrible lying to her, but he keeps reminding himself that in the end, she's going to love it. As we go along, we're going to realize that Sally can't read Jerry or Anne, either. Although, in Jerry's case, it could be because there's nothing to read. I'm sorry. I, I just really don't feel like going out. But that's just why you should. Nobody wants to be alone on their birthday. Look, I really appreciate what you're trying to do, but to tell the truth, it just wouldn't be very much fun without John. Well, it can't be any worse than staying home alone. Yeah, well, actually, I feel a little angry. John couldn't help it. Well, I know. That's why I'm doubly angry, because I really don't have any reason to be angry. <laughs> do you understand that? Of course. I understand it. That either means I'm really in touch with my feminine side, or Jerry is Jerry. She has a bottle of champagne chilling, and she'll just wait for John. They keep telling her that's no way to spend her birthday. She finally decides to go with them, in her own way. And look, on the way, we can stop in at John's office, and he can have a drink with us. Now you're talking. I'll be just a minute. Now she's talking. Now she's talking. If we stop off at John, she'll read his mind. Well, I thought if I told her not to go, it would look suspicious. Will you get on the phone and tell John to get out of there? Sally grabs the champagne and away they go. But at John's workplace, the night watchman won't let them in. He says, all these husbands supposedly work late. You know what they're doing. My husband's name is John Burton and he's upstairs right now. So either let us come in or at least use the phone. Lady. What? There is nobody left in this here building except the cleaning people. Now, the last one checked out about 10 minutes ago. A fellow named Alon John. Don. John Burton. Don That's him. Curtin. <laughs> Not only fools around, he's got a terrible handwriting. Well, they found out what they wanted to know, even if it did come in the most obnoxious way possible. Sally says he must be headed home, so let's go. Anne keeps trying to miss the turn and head for the basement, and Sally keeps catching her. This is going to require something drastic. Ooh! What's the matter? I got a pebble in my shoe. How can you get a pebble in your shoe while you're sitting down? I've had that happen. It's somewhere in your shoe that isn't bothering you, and you shift position, and suddenly, bam, there it is. You know what I mean? Well, I guess you don't. Stop the car. I gotta get it out. Jerry, why does she have to stop the car? Just take your shoe off. No, don't argue with Jerry. He's got a logic all his own. Okay, I do have a little harder time identifying with that one. Once the pebble is out, Sally says, can we please go? Oh, I threw out my back. Yeah, my back. My back out. Hey, Sally, would you get my pills out of the glove compartment, please? Your back's not real, is it? My back's real. The pain isn't. <laughs> Stop. What good is stalling? I can't find any pills. Keep looking, keep looking. You don't have any pills in the car. It'll take her 20 seconds to find that out. Well, without his pills, he has to go to his doctor, the only doctor who can fix him. But the only guy that can straighten me out is Dr. Biterbeck. <laughs> right. Why not call him and tell him we're coming over? What good will that do? Uh, leave it to me. You know the number? I'll get it from information. Jerry, I'm really sorry about this. That's okay. This guy can fix me right up. 
Oh, well, in that case, I wonder if you'd mind if I just let you and Ann go to the doctor and I'll grab myself a cab. No, I wouldn't think of that. Not at this time of night. What do you mean this time? It's early. I'll just get a cab. <laughs> she tries to hail a cab, but Jerry waves the guy off. Ann says the doctor can see us. He's at the basement. The basement? What's that yeah. nightclub? What yeah. is he, a dancing doctor? He says it's the best thing for your back. Your back doctor has back trouble? <laughs> Aren't barbers bald? I want to how far we can get him there. Well, I guess I can call a cab from there just as easily. You know, faking a bad back hurts your back. That means you're doing it wrong. At the basement, Sally says, excuse me, I'll call a cab. But we're done with subtlety. Sally. <laughs> Dr. Beidebeck and company. Yeah. Right. That's as much as I'll use since that stupid little thing is copyrighted. She's never had anything like this. She can't believe everything Jerry and Anne went through to drag her here, but the expression on her face is worth it. This is one of John's little victories. So is this. From me to you, with best wishes, kindest regards, and a lot of trouble. John, I wonder what it could be. You tell me. No, I don't want to know in advance. Come on, go ahead, try. No, I don't want to know. Come on, try. I bet you can't pick it out of my mind. I can't. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Can I open it? Go ahead. I'm a little surprised she didn't hear him crowing about how she can't read what he doesn't know, but for once he gets to be the keeper of the mystery. As long as he didn't peek. Da -da 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 -da. John. Oh, John. You got me the garnet necklace after all. Yeah. So it seems. Guess what, John? Anne was listening. She knew exactly what to get. Now about that champagne. John! Present. Morning, honey. Here's the paper. Yeah, about that champagne. I think John would like to put some of it back, if you don't mind. 